Okay, here we go. I'm bored, so anyway, here we go. How you doing? You're bored and you're uh, you're on a sugar high, I think. A sugar high. Yeah. I'll try not to do a lot of talking. I'll let you do the talking. Okay, you are? Danny Lazier. And you are? President of QP New Brunswick. And you used to work, or you work? Uh, my, the sector I come out of is corrections. Mm -hmm. I've been a correctional officer since 1980. Okay, so you've been around. I've been around. Do we got problems there? Now, we got part-time, well, ca not casual yeah, workers, we yeah. have people dying behind bars, we have uh, no provincial jail for in Fredericton. I don't know where to start, so you tell me. <laughs> you're citing all kinds of, of problems, uh, Charles. I'll, you know, the, the, you're right, there's no provincial jail in Fredericton. Uh, historically, we've always had... Uh, uh, quite a few correctional institutions in Fredericton. But we can't because they found out they were, uh, excuse my language, they were horny people, like Kingsclare well, and all that. So yeah, we, and we, all, we all know about the Carl Toff story and they, the, we subsequently had the Miller Inquiry and uh, and that got turned upside down. Uh, but that was one institution, that was the, uh, the youth facility. Uh, other than the youth facility, it was what they call the farm. Yep. King's Clear, uh, yeah. King's Clear, which is a concept that I, you know, I totally support inmates uh, working in a farm type of environment. I think if there is ever a hope for rehabilitation, that's one way to go. I'm a big supporter of that. Uh, there was also a provincial jail in Fredericton. Okay, never mind uh, the past. Let's go back. I feel like a grandpa. Well, you got to understand the past. No, you, know, maybe you can know. learn from the past. Yeah. Now, right now, the president. I thought you said you weren't going to leave me. You weren't going to tell me what to say. The president. The okay. present, All the right. present, the present. We had more people with mental illness issues. Then we have part-time correctional workers going over, looking over the issue, that's the problem, but they can't speak up because if they speak up, they'll be fired or they won't be rehired. So should we have casual workers in jail, in the provincial jail? That's been a... Uh an issue for a long time in corrections. Uh, the issue lies in the Civil Service Act. Uh, correctional officers are covered under Part 1, uh, which means they're covered by two, parts of, two pieces of legislation, the Public Service Labor Relations Act and the Civil Service Act. The problem is the Civil Service Act, and they have a rule in the, sec in the Civil Service Act that casual workers can only work um, 12 months in a 24 month period. Yeah. The rule of thumb is they work six months, they're laid off for six, and so they're they rehired. don't be full time. So that they don't. Uh, no benefits. Well, the, the, no the, protection. The, 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 the Civil Service Act, there's legislation that, that makes that happen. And that's where the, the root of the problem is. The Civil Service Act has to be, uh, has to be changed, no, but in if jail, not scratched. But in the jail, I mean, isn't that scary not to have. Full time continuity. I mean, continuity. Yeah, uh, continuity is is important in the jail. Uh, it's it's not a profession that's completely learnt in school. No, exactly. Uh, you know, entry level qualifications have changed a lot since I've been around. When I was hired in, in 1980, you needed a grade 10. Then it went to grade 12. But then it went to the one year correctional officer course, and today it's you need the two year correctional officer course. Or a university degree. I didn't know that. Yeah. So the um, I didn't sure I so. entry level has, has, has changed a lot over the years. So how come they don't protect them? They don't what? Protect them. You know, after a year, then you're full time. Why lay them off? The Civil Service Act. Your problem lies in the Civil Service Act because there's legislation that dictates you can't work more than 12 months in a 24 month period, and it's 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 it's, it's difficult from a staffing position because you're getting this constant turnover of, uh, of uh, new employees. Okay, so that can they uh, not include correctional officers in the service act? Could they make an exception? Since it's so, we got more people but in jail now. Yeah, there's, there's four departments that fall under part one, the service act. It's, uh, it's um, QP Local 1418, which represents a broad range of classification including probation officers, social workers, many other classifications. Court stenographers fall under the Civil Service Act. Uh, local 1190, which is the highway workers, they fall under the Civil Service Act, as does uh, Local 1251. So they should make an exception, no? 
Well, I, the same problem exists. It's, it's, it's more sore thumbed, I think, in corrections than it is those other. But I, I don't think you should make an exception for just 1251. I think it should be changed for all departments. Yeah, but we're dealing with people with mental illness behind bars. And really, safety is a major problem. And you have to get to know the inmates. You get to know your job, how to deal with people Absolutely. with mental illness. Yep. So yep. how, do you, how come uh, there's not an exception to the rule by saying that, hey, we need full-time workers here? We don't need an exception to the rule. We need the rule changed.